For people across America, next week's midterm elections are the first real chance to have a say on President Trump since the moment he stunned the world with that original election victory. And whilst much of the focus has been on where his Republican Party is under threat, that is far from the only story. Whilst the Midwestern state of Minnesota is traditionally a Democrat stronghold, that grip has rather weakened in recent years. Indeed, Donald Trump only narrowly lost the state in 2016. But in the 8th congressional district, where mining and shipping dominate, the support of blue-collar workers helped him to actually defeat Hillary Clinton. And two years on, the Republicans may be about to repeat that success, with many in the port city of Duluth crediting him with creating jobs and turning the economy around. The future wasn't always this bright in the American Midwest. Three years ago, this family-owned business had to lay off more than half its workers. Now they're back, the upward curve in the economy sparking a rush of orders and a newfound respect for the president. You know, I like Donald. He's, he's a bit of a spitfire, but, you know, he gets the job done. He doesn't take no for an answer, and I like that. Cheap Chinese imports had turned Minnesota's iron and steel works into a shadow of their former selves. Trump's tariffs and tax cuts changed that, and something else too. The state of Minnesota has been democratic for my whole life. I've been here for 40 years at industrial, and back in 78, 79, it was probably in the shop, it was probably 80, 20, 80% 80 Democrat, 20% Republican, and now it's, it's actually uh, balanced out. So this could be the first year that Minnesota could go red rather than being democratic. It would be quite a shift. Duluth on the shores of the vast Lake Superior is the biggest inland port in the world. Like many blue collar towns, it had been struggling. And whether or not it started with Obama's policies or Trump's, the conditions for a strong recovery have been falling into place. But the way ahead may not be quite so smooth. The goods in these containers are manufactured here in the Midwest, but they're on their way to Asia. Trump's trade war with China could have a significant effect on exports like these and the companies that make them. Nowhere do they know better than here how easily spooked investors can be. The dumping of Chinese steel closed iron mines here with thousands laid off. They need Trump to keep talking to Beijing to protect the recovery. I think what so many people up here have noticed is that we've had a significant uptick in the level of economic activity. The 2,000 miners were called back, those facilities reopened, and now we're investing in our facilities too, so we're making them more globally competitive. That journey back to prosperity is far from universal. On the tugs that compete to help cargo ships into port, business is still slow. But in this job, patience comes easily. Trump is actually the first guy we've had in quite a long time that he, he's actually trying to fix some of the problems. He's not, he's not a political insider. He's kind of a, you know, he's a businessman. He's looking at it in a business sense. And having steadily built up their own fleet, both father and son are willing to extend the same long view to their president. Not much going on today, though. Especially when they consider the alternative. We've had enough of this. We really have. We've had enough of, of this crazy uh, liberal policies. So do I think, do I think uh, Trump is the best, best spokesman? No, I don't. But he's what we've got. And he might just be around for an awful lot longer if his party can turn the tide in blue-collar areas like this one. Rachel Younger, News at 10, Duluth.